Yeah, if you're happy with that, bro, Should I'm happy. Yeah. yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap on Danny Dyer. Honestly, this is amazing. Oh, bless you. Every day I've waited for this is more. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, and I absolutely respect that. So, so cheers and uh, cheers. Men, mental health. Don't drink, because obviously that's. Yeah, that's such a depressing. <laughs> but, no, listen, look after yourself. It's been so long. It's been, you know, it's been almost a year and a half. That's how long it's, it's taken crazy. since we shot this. It's crazy. I can't believe we're actually going to be watching the film later as well. Are you nervous? Very. I think uh, from what I've seen, I know that you produce something great. So I'm really <laughs> looking forward to, uh, no. to seeing what you've done. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you today is why you actually made Stepping mm. Stone. A lot of people that make this type of film, most would have a story that closely ties them to it. Do you know about like, you know, like before I wrote a film, like what happened with my sister? And... Nope. Really? So in 2019, my little sister Valentina, she had like a terrible, terrible accident. Uh, she fell 30 feet headfirst onto marble floor. How? <laughs> yeah, That's she, she was playing on a banister uh, and just slipped right off. Um, I went outside my room and I looked down and that that was Valentina um, just completely insane. lifeless on the floor and obviously that triggered my own that battle with mental health and, and I got PTSD from that alone. They rushed her to hospital, they said very, very small chance of survival. And I made a promise to myself if Valentina was to make it out of this, I would dedicate my next project and the rest of my life to, to doing something good. Uh. Now go. Hello. <gasps> yes! Hey! Yes! Mwah! Valentina miraculously made a full recovery in the end after about six months in hospital. That's when I started writing my film based on mental health. Well done, yes. A very close family member of mine has battled with, you know, addiction and depression, anxiety. So I went to therapy to try and understand their mental illness. And through that, I learned all the details that I kind of then put into the film. That person um, had an awful suicide attempt, which resulted in like a five month coma. It was just like living the nightmare all again. And if I can help someone like me or like the other close person in my family who, who felt suicidal, or maybe it could do some good. So that's why I initially started this kind of stepping stone journey. You've come out of the other end of this and you've made something great yeah. and, you know, I'm sure your family are 100% proud of what you've done. Do you know what I was thinking about the other day? When uh, you called me and yeah. you swindled me into being the lead actor for this film. Yeah, well, you, you were showing love to my film, Cyanide. So I messaged you, are you around? I'd love to get some advice. That day was like the only day I had off. I was like, my good Samaritan deed for the day would yeah. be, I'm gonna go and help this this kid with whatever he needs for well, an hour. For, advice, for one right? hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was there for six hours, so That's yeah. <laughs> Do you know how I got Danny involved? Because you think I swindled you. I swindled him. I went through his Instagram, obviously not thinking I'd ever be able to get him, but just as like a character reference and, and just reaching out to like everyone he followed. But then there was this one person and she said, look, I promised to send it to his wife, right? And then two days passed. I've just finished school. My phone rings and it's just an unknown caller. And I'm like, hello, Noah, I was like, Who's this? Um, hello? Like that. And he goes, Danny Dyer. I went, hello. And he went, I love it. The, uh, I love the message. I love the script. I love the character. I'm in, son. He then stayed on the phone to me, telling me about why it was special to him and telling me about what he's gone through in the public eye has affected him personally. 
And, and the fact that he was just willing to open up made me think, I was like, wow, that's the solution. It's just talking to one another and you've got to, you've got to protect your mental health. You've got to protect your nut. Yeah, that's what you said, yeah. you've got to protect your nut. Welcome, welcome. This so, is cozy. It is. This is where you'll be watching Stepping Stone for the first time. It's been long enough, I've made you wait. I mean, to be honest, I've watched it so many times, I'm not even sure if I want to sit through this, but... How many times have you watched it, would you say? It's got to be over 2,000, man. <laughs> 2,000? <laughs> Something like that, it must be. Bloody shit at him. She's funny. Dude, you can She's great. I actually felt like I was giving every single person real life therapy. This is a good shot. Maybe you need rehabilitation. I like this. You need to realize your own self worth. Well done, bro. Crazy. After four years, man. I love it. I love it. I think the message is so powerful. I can't wait for people to see this, man. The whole point of the, the film, right, it isn't a suicide film and it isn't a mental illness film. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mental health, which everyone has, everyone's on the spectrum for. A counselor is a paradigm for a friend, a teacher, a, a parent, a colleague, is someone to speak to, is the stepping stone. Dom's character is just a paradigm for how a lot of men are grown up, being fed all this stuff, man up, don't cry, what have you got to complain about? And it makes them think that they don't wanna talk about it. Some people w will reach their breaking point and, and will unfortunately get to the point where they ring a suicide helpline as their very last resource. Let's say, for example, that's something that I'm thinking about and I decide to call the hotline. Like, what does that process look like? Am I going to get through to so, someone? Is it 100%? I want to take you somewhere in a minute that's going to explain that out. But I had the unfortunate scenario where I had to call a suicide helpline on behalf of somebody else. Um, and I was on the phone for 10 minutes and I had to hang up in the end because it was too late. The, the damage had been done. I'm Stats. looking forward to getting some more information on this because this is also something which uh, means a lot to me as well. So I'd like to understand, you know, what it is that people go through um, and also what the processes are for these people getting help. Simon, <laughs> this is Kush, the lead actor of Stepping Stone. We're a suicide prevention organisation. Currently, there are 125 suicides every single week. Just in the UK, demand for our helpline uh, has risen 50%, and that's from a total demand of just over 250,000 calls and chats. The bad news is that we're able to get to about half. I had a, an, a very, very close friend of mine who um, taught me everything I knew and he committed suicide last year and it was absolutely devastating and i just feel that he didn't he didn't have that person to speak to but that's because we didn't know that he was going through what he was going yeah, through yeah yeah we hear so many times from bereaved people that there were no signs people will say what signs the happiest spot? guy in the world exactly they're just they're just know. aren't signs and we have to remove the stigma of talking about mental health, which is getting better, but suicide is still that, that nasty, uh, shameful word that we, that we shy away from. What are some of the things that would, would increase that capacity of you being able to get to the other half of the people that are unable to speak to someone that really need it? Money is the thing. When we bundle up all the costs, each call costs 10 pounds. You're saying that just 10 pounds could potentially save a life? That's exactly it. When we bring it out into the light and we talk about that word, that is a directly preventative measure. And there are so many other things that, you, that we can do as a community, as families, as, as, as groups, as tribes. This film, you know, the awareness spread aside, we are platforming our Save Dom text line where you can donate either five or 10 pounds to over 300,000 subscribers on MYM, never mind the 50 plus million on ITVX. 
So we could potentially save thousands and thousands of lives if our audience just understands just how urgent help is needed. In a short term way with funding, Absolutely. I mean, as in short term, as in immediate, you can do something right now to help. And with your support and the support of the people that, that come onto your movement, uh, we'll be able to answer even more calls than we do at the moment. God, I haven't been here so long, genuinely. This is nice, man. It's a good spot, isn't it? Where in the summer, this is a place. So tomorrow's the big day, man. Right. Four years in the making ends tomorrow. You excited? <laughs> Nervous, but knowing that just 100 pounds in donations, that's the sign was saying 10 lives saved. So one of the most important parts of the film, which is why I brought you here, um, is, you know, when everything's going on with my sister and, and the, you know, suicide attempts and everything like that, this is where I'd come without my very closest friends. This was like, just a place that we could all be vulnerable and talk to each other, have a laugh, maybe have a cry, but like just normalizing those conversations about our mental health and just general well being. And that's what I want to come from Stepping Stone. I guess we'll find out soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.